G'day, I'm Tim Thompson, and today I get to violate this. It's the brand new EU100 from UHI, and it's a fully electric two-ton loader. <laughs> Weighing in at just over 2.1 tonnes with a one-ton rated lift capacity, coming with a four-in-one bucket and forks as standard, this articulated loader promises to be very useful around the farm and they've overcome a few of the issues that I found with their smaller stable mate, the U50. So let's take a walk around and have a chat about what the major changes are. So the first area of major improvement is the bucket. It's still only a shade over 1100 mil or just under four feet wide, but it's a lot deeper now. It comes with good bulldog teeth and they fixed the major problem that they had with the U50 and that is the four in one bucket articulation is now super wide and can pick up really heavy loads with lots of power. So the bucket on this is going to perform for most cases, whether that be moving dirt and smoothing out ground, whether that be grabbing things with the four in one or moving things around the farm, you're gonna find a lot of uses for this bucket. Check out the diff on this bad boy. Over-engineered or what? Forward and reverse is powered by two electric motors on this loader, one on each diff. This one's at the rear and this one's at the front. Both of them have over a 250 mil clearance or fording depth. One thing I will point out is that there's loose wiring in several places on this machine. The most concerning is at the rear motor here. This could easily foul on things and I think as usual these days, it would pay you to go over this stuff before you start using it. Now let's crack open the boot and have a look at what you get. Behind the driver's seat is a DC converter and three power controllers. Below that to the right is another electric motor that drives the hydraulics for the mast function and the hydraulic pump. But it still runs on deep cycle lead acid batteries and this is a good thing if you don't like the torturing of young African children and you need a little bit more weight in the back for ballast. So they're actually an ideal choice for a machine like this. The charging point on the machine has been relocated to in the cab as well, and it comes now with an Anderson plug. Bear in mind, it's a 15 amp charger. So you're gonna need a 15 amp charging point somewhere where you store the vehicle. I didn't have one, so it meant parking in front of the house and using the air conditioner. The tyres are also an upgrade. They've got mud tread on them now rather than turf tyres, which meant that I didn't have nearly the problems of slippage that I did with the U50. In fact, the only time that I broke traction was when I had the bucket down on the front wheels, and this showed up the lack of a locking diff in the front. You also get two types of hitching mounts, pin, and tow ball, meaning that you've got a wider range of implements that you can tow behind the vehicle easily. Getting onto the tractor, you realize how much larger this is to its stablemate U50. Everything's a lot more spread out. And they've upgraded several features. The seat belt is now retractable, which is nice. There's a new park brake that makes more sense than the old one. However, it does foul you when you're getting into the cab just slightly. There's also extra added protection bars on the subframe that can be lowered when you're doing those more dicey jobs. There's still your standard emergency cutout switch, which is nice. Now that does disconnect the battery from the loader. So you need to make sure that that's engaged before you attach the charger. Now I think it would be fair to say that I really like this machine, but there's one big, big problem. Bye bye little one. Sorry. Now happily UHI have already acted on this issue and all of the new machines being brought into the country are being fitted with seat safety switches. You'd be surprised how common it is for agricultural machinery not to have seat safety switches and various other things. I think in this modern age of being sued for sneezing and also with kids being on farms I think it's really important that companies like UHI are taking these steps where they're actually going to start fitting safety switches. So good job UHI. Sitting atop your now adjustable steering column, which is nice, you've got your standard array of switches and gauges. So you've got emergency lights, headlights, a horn, indicators on a standard stalk, high and low beam and flash. 
The thing I like about the control panel the best though is the gauges. Gone are the difficult to read digital gauges showing percentage. Instead, you've got some lovely analog gauges with green, orange, and red bits. I had a question last time I reviewed the U50. What would happen if you ran out of battery down the bottom of the paddock? Well, obviously this thing wouldn't work anymore. It's two tons. So you'd be doing two things. The first is you'd be going and getting an eye test because if you miss gauges this size and run out of juice, there's something wrong. The second thing that you'd be doing is going and buying a generator and make out like a Tesla driver. Your control lever to your right has multiple functions. First off, there's the forward and reverse control select. There are no gears on this machine, so it's very much like a forklift to operate. Then you have your mast controls, lower, raise, release and crowd towards you. Pretty stock standard stuff. Most of these controllers are blanked off. I'd love to see a four-in-one bucket control on these. The four-in-one bucket is controlled with this accessory lever here. And it does mean that you have to take your hand off the mask controls to operate your four-in-one bucket. This controller here is your locking pin control so you can quickly and easily change between your bucket and your forks while you're sitting on the cab. The larger capacity engines and batteries also meant that this machine had a lot more reserve going up hills and quite frankly, you could go dangerously fast if you wanted to. One of the things I did note was that with the lack of gears and just having the Vario select on the control lever for your forward and reverse, you're on the brake a lot going downhill. And that's okay as long as you control speed, but it can get interesting if you let the machine get away from you. Brakes are a bit spongy. The forks themselves are load rated to 900 kilos, which is just a whisker underneath the load rating of the machine itself and they made short work of heavy jobs around the farm, such as unloading concrete stay pads, moving IBCs full of timber that weigh about a tonne, and the really good articulation of the machine and its maneuverability meant that getting those in past the tractor shed into the woodshed around a corner was actually super easy and didn't require a lot of effort. All in all, with standard jobs around the farm, I really didn't find a limit to this machine in terms of a front end loader or in terms of a forklift. So the verdict, is this thing gonna replace your tractor? No, it's not. There's no engine braking, so going down steep hills is gonna become a bit dicey. The lack of lockers in the diffs mean that you can get it bogged if you take it in really sketchy circumstances. But the power of this thing is fantastic for lifting weights up to a ton. It's really good at loading and unloading vehicles in tight spaces because it's got great articulation. And it can get around most places of a reasonable farm with relative ease. Plus, there's no engine to service, so the cost of ownership decreases. So this will have a place with people that are looking for a second vehicle that they use mainly for unloading and loading of trucks or moving soil and various other things with the loader. It's a handy little second vehicle. Don't forget guys, if you like this kind of thing, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. There's plenty more content like this on timthompson.ag and I've got a Patreon. See you next week.